Welcome back. I'm Drone Tech. Yo. And while I'm not a big Fox News fan by any means, I also can't stand watching Democrat Party mouthpieces like Jake Tapper go out there and pretend to be something they're not and wrongly smear their political and business opponents. Yesterday, our reanimated corpse and chief reacted to a perfectly legitimate question from Fox News reporter Peter Ducey by calling him a stupid son of a bitch. What a stupid son of a bitch. Trump did it better, or at least he was funny, Biden just comes off sinister. Circling back to Biden's attack on democracy, we see all these very same people cheering Biden on and excusing him as just being frustrated. Because as we all know, all together now, it's, it's different, different when we do it. On Monday, when a Fox News reporter asked him a question about inflation, Mr. Biden fired off an insult. The president was clearly frustrated that he was being peppered with questions about Ukraine at an economic event, and Ducey's question, even though it was on topic, clearly struck a nerve with the president, Cecilia. But he appeared frustrated. It's not easy being president. Look, I don't really care about Biden calling Ducey an SOB, and I doubt many of us really do, but I think what we're all sick of is the Democrats holding their political opponents to these standards that they themselves are never held to. Wait a minute, maybe I'm wrong. Jake Tapper apparently went on that chud Jimmy Kimmel show and defended Ducey to prove how nonpartisan he is. Uh, Peter Ducey, is he a dumb son of a bitch? I don't think any, I don't think any president should be calling any journalist a, a dumb son of a bitch. Uh, and the, to, to be fair to Peter Ducey, the question was fairly anodyne. He like, didn't technically call him a dumb son of a bitch. He was caught on microphone. I mean, saying the, he was. It'd be like you calling me a dumb son of a bitch right now, caught on microphone. I mean, he was standing right in front of a microphone. Right, right. And Fox News says you are, you know, that you're on Team Biden and you are a mouthpiece for the Democrats. And yet here you are defending Peter Ducey who, as far as I've been able to tell, is indeed a dumb son of a bitch. So... <laughs> Clearly, you're not a mouthpiece for Joe Biden, and we know this because you're all laughing, and this is all just a big joke, and Peter Ducey is a son of a bitch. No, really. Look how the media reacted to Trump calling a known recipient of Democrat money, Chuck Todd, sleepy eyes and an SOB. There was no laughter, calling it an attack on democracy, and even anti-semitic of course i'm on meet the press a show now headed by sleepy eyes chuck todd he's a sleeping son of a bitch i'll tell you sob thing might be going a little too far it, you know he's uh i uh, bring my kids up to respect the office of the presidency and the president um i don't allow them to say anything negative ever uh, about the president it him doing that, uh, it creates a challenge to all parents right. when he uses vulgarities like that. When plenty of us are trying to do the, I was raised, I sort of have the military rule in my house. You don't speak ill of a sitting president. This is not shtick, it's not comedy. Uh, this is real and it's dangerous. You make the press the enemy, which he has. There are people out here who are crazy enough to really feel that. Take this seriously. And in the, in the, the call, our friend Chuck Todd, uh, SOB, that was wrong. The reason that's ultimately insidious is because the words of a president do matter. And if ultimately that riff attacking the press is about undermining institutions that exist to hold power to account, that's dangerous as well. As of today, Sleepy Eyes Chuck Todd has had nothing to say about Joe Biden's vulgarities. I actually got on Twitter and searched for any mention from John Avalon or April Ryan about Biden calling Ducey an SOB or how dangerous it is to the press, and I found absolutely nothing. Look at how they reacted to something as innocuous as Let's Go Brandon. Let's talk about what happened today uh, with Joe Biden. What does it tell you that somebody is rude like that and disrespects the office of the president to his face uh, about the political climate in this country. It's juvenile, it's reprehensible by the father, uh, but I don't think it's fundamentally about incivility. I think it is fundamentally about insurrection. Don't look past this. Don't look at this as a story about giving airtime to a MAGA guy who goes on Steve Bannon's podcast and said, I wasn't joking. Not only did I say, F you, Mr. President, I said more than that. This is the slow motion insurrection. When these people are speaking, they're not joking. 
Let's go Brandon isn't about what you feel about supply chain issues and gas. It is the cry of insurrectionists. It, this is, this is, it's, it's a huge breach of, of a norm that you would, I don't even know how to describe this as a norm because this is just something that I never would have even imagined somebody was going to be doing. The mainstreaming of a chant that is actually about F the president of the United States is not patriotic, it's trollish. Now we're watching the opposite. Instead, they're actually trying to downplay it and bolster the idea that there's something wrong or dumb about being critical of Democrat power. Also, you might have noticed that as part of his theatrical act, Jake Tapper made the completely baseless claim that Fox News would never come to his defense if the roles were reversed. Wrong again, Jake. Standards for decency uh, don't have to do with whether or not you like the people that are being treated poorly. It just has to do with the standard. I recognize that uh, Peter's channel probably would never come to my defense like that, but that is what it is. On July 25th, 2018, Caitlin Collins was banned from a Trump speech because they didn't like the questions she was asking. Fox News defended her, putting out a statement saying, quote, we stand in strong solidarity with CNN for the right to full access for our journalists as part of a free and unfettered press. Brett Baer even appeared on Kimmel's show and straight up said, quote, as a member of the White House press pool, Fox News stands firmly with CNN on this issue of access. Fox News even went to bat for Jim Acosta when Trump pulled his press pass, joining a lawsuit to have his badge restored. But Jake Tapper is a down the middle, just the facts newsman. It just goes to show that you cannot trust these people. Even when they're trying to appear to be consistently applying standards, they're still being deceptive and spreading misinformation. If you're at all interested in who sponsored this ABC comedy show, it was Crest, Hulu, and Nissan. Time to find some new toothpaste, cancel Hulu because it sucks anyway, and steer clear of Nissan. Don't spend money on companies that hate you and give institutional support to wannabe authoritarians. All right, folks, that's all I have for this one. Help feed the algorithm and hit that like button, share this video, and let us know what you think in the comments.